Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. A little while ago, my mother-in-law came back from one of her knitting club meetings, all excited because some of the girls there had been knitting frisbees and tossing them around the library where they meet. So she challenged me to come up with a crocheted version. Now she did say that she strongly suggested I use cotton, be probably because cotton has sort of a nice weight to it, and you can toss it in the washing machine if it gets a little on the dirty side, but this is just a toy, so you can use whatever scrap yarn you have lying around. And now the frisbee part. Does it fly? It sure does. This thing is a lot of fun. We were actually out having a whole lot of fun with it this morning. It really flies. It's squishy. If you get struck with it or you're not really good at catching things, you're not going to get hurt. You can stuff it into a pocket or in the bottom of a bag and it pops right back out, ready to spin. <laughs> So let's grab our hooks, grab our cotton scraps, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a frisbee together. You need around 80 grams of yarn for this project. I've got some cotton scraps that I'm going to use up. This is size four medium worsted weight yarn. I'm going to do mine in stripes, but you could use a solid color for your frisbee if you wanted. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is a 4.5 millimeter or a size 7 in the US or the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. After you've chained one to secure your circle, Chain two more because we're going to be using the double crochet stitch. That chain three that comes out of your circle will count as a double crochet in row one. So into the circle, making sure you work over top of your short tail, you're going to work an additional 11 double crochet stitches and at the end of row one we will have 12 stitches including our chain three. Once you've worked 11 double crochet into your cinch circle, including that chain three, you'll have 12 stitches. Grab your short tail, cinch up that circle nice and tightly, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that we began with. That's row one. We're going to start into row two. Every row will begin with a chain three. That chain three will not count as a double crochet because we're going to use the false stitch method to make this circle but we do need to get up to the right height. So every row will begin with a chain three. We're going to double crochet into the same stitch as joining or into the same place that the chain three comes out of. So if you pull up in your chain three, you see that little space, that's the same space or same stitch as joining and you double crochet right into that. For each stitch all the way around of row two, you're going to work two double crochet into every single one of those stitches and I'll catch up with you with the false stitch near the end. Once you've worked two double crochet into every stitch all the way around, you'll count 24 if you include your chain three. But we don't want this gap at the end of every row as we work circularly. So we come to what is often called the false stitch. This is a little thing that sits just to the right of your chain three if you're working right-handed or just to the left of your chain three if you're working left-handed. Sometimes you're directed to use this stitch and we're going to use it today. So we're going to work a single double crochet, so one double crochet into the false stitch. We're going to skip over top of the chain three, find the top of the first real double crochet and join with a slip stitch to that instead. So you don't count the chain three, it kind of gets pushed to the back, you get this nice solid circular color, there's no gaps, and you still have only 24 stitches at the end of row two. Now I'm rapidly running out of my first bit of color, so I'm going to change colors now. I like to change colors at the end of every row. You can, of course, if you're really using up your scraps, just tie in a new color as it comes along. You don't have to necessarily tie off like I am, but I'm going to try and make my rows sort of even. So this is going to finish off my pink. I'm going to grab my next color, which let's see here, maybe I'll use this yellow. All right. When you join a new color, you make a slip knot. And I like to join it right in the same place that we fastened off. So there's your little fasten off. Plunk your needle in there or your hook join with a slip stitch 
And just like you weren't changing color at all, you just chain three to begin your new row, and off we go. So for those of you who didn't change color, just chain three, and we're all now back at the same spot. So into the same place that we just chained three out of, or the same stitches joining, if you pull up on it, you can see the little space there, you're going to work a double crochet. The new pattern for row three is this. Double crochet into the next stitch, and here we go. Two, double crochet into the first stitch of a set. Double crochet into the next stitch, and repeat. Two, one, two, one, all the way around. We are using the false stitch, so I'll catch up with you there. All right, if you were to look at this pattern normally, and we were counting the chain three, you would see the pattern of two, double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and repeated. But because we don't want that gap, and we're using the false stitch, we finished our last set, two, one. The false stitch is sitting there. We're going to put a single double crochet, so one double crochet into the false stitch. Skip over top of the chain three, so we are replacing the chain three. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet. And that continues our regular stitch increase. So you should have 36 double crochet, real double crochet, at the end of row three. We're not counting the chain three. It gets pushed to the back and ignored. Into row four, chain three to begin. Double crochet in the same stitch as joining. That counts as two for now. Double crochet into each of the next two stitches and repeat that pattern all the way around. Two, double crochet into the first stitch of the set and double crochet into each of the next two. Repeat all the way around and we'll have 48 stitches at the end of this row. Don't forget to use the false stitch. At the end of your last set, you should be confronted with the false stitch sitting there. Work a double crochet into the false stitch, skip over the chain three, join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet. And you should have 48 stitches at the end of row four. I'm going to change color again. You don't have to, and I'll catch up with you for the beginning of row five. Row five begins with a chain three. We're going to count that for now until we use our false stitch and skip over it. We're going to work a double crochet into the same stitch as joining. That counts as two for now, and you're going to work a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And that is your pattern for row five. Two double crochet into the first stitch of a set. Double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Repeat that around. We're going to use the false stitch again, and we're going to have 60 double crochet at the end of row five. We're coming up on the end of row five. I like to take a moment, lay it down flat on my workspace and use the heat of my hand to sort of flatten out my circle. That will help loosen up some of the stitches and keep it flat. I'm running out of my light green, so I'm gonna change color again. But first, I'm gonna work a double crochet into that false stitch, skip over the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet to finish off row five. You should have 60 stitches all the way around. We do not include that chain three. I'm gonna change colors and we'll start row six. For row six, we're going to chain three to begin. This chain three will not count at the end, but we're gonna use it as a counter for now. Work another double crochet into the same stitch as joining. So that's, for now, two double crochet into the first stitch of the set. And then you're going to work a double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So the pattern for row six is two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat that all the way around. Use the full stitch. We're going to be up to 72 stitches at the end of this row. At the end of row six, make sure you work a double crochet into the false stitch. Skip over the chain three, because we're not counting the chain three. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet, and you should have 72 stitches all the way around. And if you lay it down on your work surface, it should be nice and flat. Row seven, we're gonna chain three to begin. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. That counts as two for now. And then you're going to double crochet into each of the next five stitches. 
So that's the pattern for row seven. Two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, double crochet into each of the next five, repeat that all the way around, double crochet into the false stitch, skip the chain three, join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet, and at the end of row seven, we'll be up to 84 stitches. We're gonna work row eight now. So we're gonna chain three to begin. I've changed color yet again. Row eight, chain three, double crochet into the same stitch as joining. And you're going to double crochet into each of the next six stitches. So the pattern all the way around is two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next six. Make sure you use the false stitch at the end, skip the chain three, join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet, and you will have 96 stitches at the end of this row. At the end of row eight, we have 96 stitches, and that is it for increasing. We are going to work a row now of just straight double crochet. No increasing. We're going to chain three to begin. But unlike previous rows, we are not going to double crochet into the same stitch as joining. We're going to double crochet into the very next stitch and into each stitch all the way around, including the false stitch. So you're going to Double crochet into every stitch for all the way around. Include the, the false stitch. We're going to skip the chain three, like we have in previous rows, and slip stitch to join to the top of the first real double crochet. And your stitch count should still be 96 all the way around. At the end of row nine, we are not increasing. You should still have 96 stitches. Remember to use the false stitch, skip the chain three, and we're still double, or sh sh I should say, we're still slip stitching to the top of the first real double crochet. So your frisbee should be curling around just a little bit. I'm going to change colors again, and we're going to start to decrease. For row 10, we're going to begin with a chain three, just like every other row, but we're going to start with a double crochet two stitches together. And we're going to double crochet the next two stitches together, so we're not using the stitch where we joined. You begin a regular old double crochet in the next stitch, Work the first half of it, leave two loops on your hook, yarn over, start a double crochet in the next stitch, work the first half of that, you'll have three loops left, now yarn over and pull back through everything. So that's a double crochet two together. You're going to double crochet into each of the next six stitches, and then you're going to start all over again. Double crochet two together, double crochet into each of the next six stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around. You are going to use the false stitch at the end of this row, and you're going to skip over the chain three and join to the top of the first double crochet two together that we made. So I'll catch up with you there. At the end of row 10, make sure you use the false stitch for your last double crochet. Skip the chain three and slip stitch to join at the top of the first double crochet two together. And as you can see, I'm really starting to get down to the nitty gritties of my little yarn stash here. I've sort of had to move into pink halfway through that row. Row 11, speaking of rows, we're going to do another row of decrease. So we're going to chain three to begin. And we're going to start the same way. So we're not going to use the same stitch that we've chained three out of or joined. We're going to begin by double crocheting two together across the next two stitches. And then double crocheting into each of the next five stitches. So double crochet two together, double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Repeat that all the way around. You will use the false stitch. Skip the chain three, join to the top of the first double crochet two together. That'll be the end of row 11, and you should be down to 72 stitches. At the end of row 11, we should be down to 72 stitches. Make sure you work your last double crochet in the false stitch. That's the little thing that the chain three is connected to. Skip over the chain three and slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet two together. I changed color again mid row and I'm just tying in the ball. I'm not doing anything fancy here. Oh my gosh, that looks like unicorn ice cream. <laughs> okay, one more row and it's really simple. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna single crochet in the same stitch that we joined in. So same stitch and you're going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around, but this time you're going to skip the false stitch. So you single crochet in the same stitch as joining, single crochet in every stitch around, 
We're going to skip the false stitch this time and we're going to slip stitch to join on the first single crochet we made. At the end of row 12, we're back at the beginning. There's the false stitch. There's the first single crochet we made. We're not going to use the false stitch this time. We're going to skip right over and join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet we made. You should still have 72 stitches at the end of this row, but if you're one over or one under, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> what you should have is a closed in frisbee looking shape. You can fasten off, weave in your ends, make sure you get the middle one too if you didn't get that one to start with, and you can toss it to a friend. There you go. One easy to make and super fun frisbee, perfect for the summer ahead. Take it to the beach, the park, wherever you might be going and have fun with it. <laughs> You'll find a written copy of this pattern available for sale in our Etsy shop. Please pop over and pick up a pattern. It helps support us here at the show and we really appreciate it when you do. And that's it. We will see you soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until next time, stay safe, stay crafty, have fun, <laughs> and we will see you soon. Bye everybody.